Hey, I'm Brandon Lee. Welcome to my Vivo X80 Masterclass on shooting cinematic footage with this top of the line smartphone from Vivo. The first thing I'm going to start off with here is explaining my video settings because if you don't get your settings right, nothing else is going to look good. I'm going to open up the camera app. I'm in video mode. My resolution for video is 4K, which is also UHD, 30 frames per second. The reason I shoot at 4K at 30 frames per second is because 4K is the resolution that I would export my video at, and 30 frames per second is the best frame rate for a regular speed motion if I don't want to slow it down in post. If I want slow motion, I'll switch over to 60 frames per second. That will give me approximately two times slow motion. This phone does have the option of 8K, but I normally don't use it because it will be a bigger file size and I don't need that much resolution. But if you want to be able to crop it in a lot later, then 8K might be a good choice for you. Or if you want to export super high resolution, you are able to upload 8K videos on YouTube. So it just depends on what you're going for, but 8K is another option. For stabilization, I just leave it at standard stabilization. That's because the ultra stabilization reduces my resolution to 1080p, as you see here. And the horizontal line stabilization, which automatically levels my horizon, it's a great feature. As you can see here, it keeps the image level even if I'm turning the phone. But I don't use that either, usually because it reduces the resolution. I just use standard stabilization. Okay, those are my basic settings for the phone. Now let's go out and start shooting. The first step of getting cinematic footage with your phone is just finding a good subject. And right now, I'm at a spot that I would consider a pretty good subject for filming with my phone. And I'll explain why that is. First of all, you wanna film something that's colorful because smartphones look the best when they're pointed at extremely colorful subjects. Second of all, I want a subject that I can get up close to and a subject that I can move through or move around instead of just standing back and looking at from far away. This is because in film, we're always trying to add depth to our shots. We're always trying to make things look 3D and moving the camera or getting close to the subject is a great way to make something feel more three-dimensional. So that's why I like being in spaces that are a little bit more confined, a little bit narrower, like this cute little courtyard that we're in right now, because I can just take my phone and I can move through it. And things look more 3D. And I have lots of subjects that I can move around and create interesting shots with. And of course, nothing makes a shot more interesting than having another person be your subject. So in this case, I have Elliot here and Elliot's gonna be my actor for a few shots. So let's say I have, I don't know, something like these columns behind me and I wanna bring them to life in the shot somehow. Then I can just have Elliot move through my shot. So Elliot, will you just pretend like you're walking in there and you're taking a look through the columns? Sure. Okay, so he's gonna walk in. Three, two, one, action. So let's say I really like the staircase, but I don't know what to do with it. Well, I can just have Elliot come down the stairs. Action. This time I'm gonna start with my phone actually inside the staircase a little bit, and I'm gonna walk backwards as he walks down the stairs. Three, two, one, action. An empty scene like this has a lot more life when you have a central subject. So I'm just gonna have Elliot walk into my shot and I'm gonna lower my camera. Three, two, one, action. I can bring this drawing to life by having Elliot enter the shot. Three, two, one, action. So when you're looking for a good subject to film with your smartphone, you want to start off by noticing the colors around you, making sure it's something that has strong enough colors that will look good on your smartphone. Then you want to make sure that you have a subject that can be 3D on camera because you're able to get close to it and you're able to move through it or around it. Then of course, it always brings the scene to life when you have a person to be in it. So try to include your friends, your family, anyone that wants to be in your smartphone videos. 
Okay, step two of cinematic shooting on a smartphone is setting the exposure properly because the auto exposure on a smartphone won't always make the right decisions for you. So let's say I want to expose properly for Elliot here. Well, the auto exposure kind of blew out the background behind him. You see how super bright that is? What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap somewhere on the screen, like here, lock my exposure, and then I drag it down just a little bit until I see details start to appear in the background behind him. Maybe somewhere around there. There may be times when you do want to use auto exposure, such as a scene where there's too much dynamic range all within one shot. So for instance, if I have a shot that starts up here looking at the tree, and then I tilt down to Elliot as he walks to that bench, let's give it a try. Action, walk to the bench. Then I may need auto exposure to help me keep that properly exposed. Otherwise, part of it's gonna to be too bright or part of it's gonna to be too dark. I'll show you what happens if I keep the exposure locked the whole time. Three, two, one, action. That doesn't work. So for most shots, you do want to expose manually by tapping on the screen and holding it and then dragging to taste to adjust the exposure and then just leaving it there throughout the shot. And the only time you'll want to use your auto exposure is if you have a shot that has way too much dynamic range, way too much bright and dark, all within the same scene. Then you're gonna to wanna to let your phone automatically adjust to compensate for that. All right, let's talk about the kind of light that's gonna look the best in your smartphone footage. First of all, I like to shoot on sunny days in direct light whenever possible. Usually earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon where the light is coming at a lower angle like we have right now. It's about an hour or two before sunset at the moment, and that's my favorite time to get that golden afternoon light. You can use it as front light, which is what you're seeing right now. This is where the sun is behind you, and the light is hitting your subject directly. Front light can be kind of flat looking, but it can also bring out the saturation in a brightly colored subject. If your subject happens to be a person, front light is the worst kind of light to shoot in usually, because can you come out in the sun? Watch what happens, stand right here. Yeah, first of all, they're gonna be squinting. Second of all, it brings out all the details in their skin, which most people don't want. It's just a little unflattering. And it's, of course, uncomfortable physically for them to be filmed in front light and they end up shielding their eyes, just like he's doing right here. So flat front light, not so good for people. Next, you have side light, which is the light that Elliot's in right now. Now this is very contrasty at the moment because we have direct sun and it's bringing a lot of shadows into the frame. Uh, but side light can be really dramatic and cool looking. So I'll usually shoot in side light when there's texture I wanna bring out in the shot, such as a textured wall, some sort of a rocky surface. The reason that you can see all the texture in these plants and these bricks is because they're in side light. And finally, we have backlight, and that is when the light is behind your subject. And depending on the time of day, usually backlight will look the best. You notice the backlight is more flattering on Elliot's face because it's not bringing out texture in his skin. It's making his skin look smooth. And it gives us a little background separation, a little bit of a halo, a rim of light around him. So that helps to create a 3D feeling in the shot, which is really important in smartphones because we don't have natural bokeh. We don't have natural out of focus areas of the shot to separate our foreground from our background. Everything's in focus, which means you need to use that light to create the depth in your frame. One thing you have to watch out for if your subject is in the backlight is glare on the lens of your smartphone because smartphones tend to glare worse than a regular camera. Watch what happens when I move out from the shadows. Boom, the shot's ruined once the phone is in the direct sunlight. So the solution for that is keep your phone in the shadows and keep your subject in the light. So Elliot is standing in the light, but the phone is under this awning, so we are in the shadow. That gets rid of all that glare on the lens and you get a nice contrasty shot. Now I'm gonna improvise some shots and talk you through how I take advantage of the lighting. So we have an alley here that's pretty cool looking and I position myself so we're in backlight. And there's a spot of direct light on the door that I'm putting in the foreground of my shot. And then there's more direct light hitting the bricks sort of around there. And I'm gonna have Elliot step out into the light. Oh man, that was cool. <laughs> Come back, pigeon. So Elliot is now standing in the direct light with a little bit of a rim of light around him. I don't know if you can see that, but there's just a little bit of a rim 
of light around his body that separates him from the background. So first of all, I'm gonna set my exposure like I showed you before, locking it down, I'm gonna darken this a bit, make it nice and dramatic. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of motion and I'll talk more about how I add camera motion later, but I'll just demonstrate it here. And Elliot, you're just going to take uh, a couple steps forward and look in the window. And I'm gonna do a little movement, three, two, one, action. Got a little bit of glare in the shot. I may not want that, so I've raised my angle a bit so that I don't see the sun as much. And action. Now I'm gonna use some side light. So we've got Elliot standing here and this wall is being side lit so you see all the texture. And we've got this cool shadow behind Elliot. So I'm gonna have him actually move a bit closer to the wall so that his shadow falls on the wall. Nice. Gonna lock down my exposure here, set it to my taste. Okay, so I'm setting my frame so that we have Elliot followed by his shadow. He's facing into the sun so that we have light on his face. That's one important thing. Uh, I'll show you what happens if Elliot faces the other way. Turn around. So you don't wanna have your subject face away from the sun in a side light situation because then you can't see any detail on their face unless that's the look you're going for. In this case, I do want to see Elliot's face, so turn back toward the sun. And then we're just gonna walk a little bit and walk. Now I'm gonna use some front light to film these signs in front of me because they're brightly colored, so the front light brings out the saturation in those signs. So I'm locking my exposure. I'm adjusting it a bit so it looks good to my eye. Maybe something like that. Here's the thing you need to watch out for in front light. If it's late in the day, like right now, hello, your shadow may be in the shot. Really easy to get that in there. The way I avoid showing my shadow in the shot is by dropping down a bit and tilting up, just like that. Now my shadow is magically gone. My final step for making my smartphone shots cinematic is camera movement. As you've already seen, in most of my shots, I move the smartphone in one way or another to make it feel more dynamic. First, I'll show you how I hold the phone because that's pretty important. One hand grips the phone like this. The other hand is underneath supporting it like this. And then I sort of press. I like press down with my top hand and I press up with my bottom hand. So the bottom hand's pressing up and the top hand is pressing down. And that creates a bit of tension that helps to keep it a bit steadier. So that's the hand position. Then I lower my body down, just like you see here. So I'm not standing all the way upright. I'm a little bit lower than normal. And I point my phone the direction I wanna go. And then I roll my feet and I just sort of glide forward. I try to walk as smoothly as possible. I don't lift up my shoulders. I don't lower my shoulders. I keep everything steady. Now I'm gonna show you how I set up a shot with camera movement. First of all, pick my subject. We've got a subject here, lots of colors, lots of stuff that I can move through to make the shot look 3D. We're gonna have Elliot sitting down at that bench right there. Now I'm gonna do a push forward. And for these kinds of forward movements, the wide angle lens makes it look faster. It makes it look more dynamic. Three, two, one, action. Next, I'm gonna film this beautiful church. I'm gonna do sort of an FPV roll in this shot. So I'm gonna start with the camera tilted one way, and then I'm gonna move and I'm gonna tilt the camera the other way. I'm using my wide angle lens, and I'm tilting my camera like this at the beginning. And then I'm gonna push forward, and I'm gonna slowly rotate the camera as I walk. Three, two, one. Now I'm gonna teach you how to do an orbit, which is where you walk around your subject, rotating around them. 
So you actually don't need a gimbal for this shot if you know how to set up the scene properly. So first of all, look for an open space. We have a nice open plaza here, nothing I'm gonna hit, nothing I'm gonna trip over, so I don't have to worry about that. Then you wanna position your subject in the center of the space so you have as much room around them as possible. So Elliot is standing here and around him there is absolutely nothing for me to hit as I walk. That's great. I'm gonna use my 1X lens, gonna lock my focus and my exposure on Elliot just like we see here. And now I'm going to lower my position a bit because we have very low sunlight at the moment and I don't want my shadow to be in the shot. And remember that trick I taught you before. If you're afraid of your shadow getting in the shot, don't tilt down like this and show the ground because your shadow will be somewhere there on the ground. Tilt up so that you don't see the ground. I have the camera facing him and my toes, my toes are pointed forward the direction I'm gonna walk. Here we go. So those are my steps for getting cinematic shots on your smartphone. Thank you so much to Vivo for sponsoring this video. Please click like and subscribe and of course that notification bell so that you know the next time I post a video. All right, I'll see you next time.